Ladies and gentlemen, future past district governors. <laughs> Good afternoon. Bonjour, konnichiwa, buenas tardes, annyeong haseo, boataji. I always struggle with the Italian, buon pomeriggio, ni hao, and where I come from, g'day. Thank you, Australians. It's wonderful to be with you, all of you, at this very, very exciting event. And I have some really good news for you today. But firstly, I want to start with a question. Raise your hand if you think that looking after our environment is important. I'm just looking for those without a hand up. Good. Okay. The good news is that most people around the world agree with you. And for some, especially younger people, but some even as old as me, the environment is one of the most important issues of current times. Research shows that degradation of the environment is a major concern for those under the age of 40. And don't we Rotarians keep talking about how we're trying to attract younger people into our organisation? And what's more, in a survey sent to non-Rotarians last year asking what cause would be the focus of an ideal organisation for them, the number one issue was the environment. And aren't we always trying to be relevant to those we want to join us? You know, those elusive non-Rotarians. Looking after our environment is an entirely appropriate activity for Rotarians. Why? Because we care in all sorts of ways. As former United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon said, saving our planet, lifting people out of poverty, advancing economic growth, these are all one and the same battle. And one of the biggest environmental problems we have all over the world is the massive proliferation of throwaway plastics. In our disposable society, we see plastic waste everywhere in a number of forms. What can we do? I was staying at a hotel in Minneapolis a couple of months ago, and in addition to an ice dispensing machine for guests, which we often see, they had a water bottle refilling station on every floor. How simple, but how sensible. Here's another example. At the President's Cup golf event last December in Melbourne, and yes, the good guys lost, this water station was very popular with the spectators and much better for the environment than thousands of single-use plastic bottles. Now, don't believe that one person can't make a difference. This is past district governor Sandy Mortensen from Colorado, USA. She suggested to me that Rotary should set an example at our Honolulu convention by supplying water filling stations and encouraging Rotarians to have a reusable water bottle. I agreed with enthusiasm and passed the suggestion on to the meeting staff, and it will happen in Honolulu. And the moderator of this international assembly also cares about the environment. So she suggested to President Lick Holger that such a concept was appropriate here at this international assembly. And that's why, with the compliments of President Lick Holger, each of you received a quality refillable water bottle at registration on Sunday. Isn't that great? And I thank him. I thank him and his committee for taking this positive step in supporting a sustainable environment. <laughs> but looking after our environment takes a number of forms. And Rotarians and the family of Rotary are active in project work in support of the environment within our areas of focus, and more locally. Let me give you one example. 
This is Ludovic Grosjean, past president of the Rotaract Club of Melbourne City in Australia. He's also a director of the Environmental Sustainability Rotarian Action Group, and he has a special interest in cleaning up rivers and oceans. He was recognised last year at Rotary Day at the UN event in Nairobi as one of Rotary's people of action. Ludwig inspires Rotarians and Rotaractors to clean up waterways, a simple but effective project that just about any club can do. Now, each year, Rotaractors in Germany have a nationwide hands-on project. This year, it has an environmental focus. They're taking action to protect wild bees, as well as building homes for those bees. And Rotarians are helping. Now, bees assist with the germination of crops, so everyone wins. Now, we'll hear from past President Barry Rasson shortly. And my good friend Barry, in his theme speech here in San Diego two years ago, he said this. Sustainability has become our watchword in Rotary. We want the good we do to last. We want to make the world a better place, not just here, not just for us, for everyone, for generations. That was Barry's quote. And there can be no greater justification for Rotary working on environmental issues than those words from now past President Barry. Now, we all have our favorite things to do to enhance the environment. You may recall that mine was to, to plant trees and I was thrilled at the response from the Rotary world. And it's also very pleasing to hear that many Rotary clubs are continuing with tree planting programs. I've almost removed the dirt from under my fingernails. What short-term difference does this make? Well, you may be surprised. On a hot summer's day in the suburbs of Western Sydney in Australia, two streets only one kilometre apart have a temperature difference of up to 10 degrees Celsius, 18 degrees Fahrenheit. What's the cause? Shade provided by trees. There are a large number of examples of projects benefiting the environment that have been carried out under our current areas of focus. One is a global grant in India where the Rotary Club of Pune and their international partner in Switzerland worked with the watershed organisation and local government to percolate water, to build dams, to plant trees, to prevent erosion and to train the uh, villagers and the farmers on soil and water conservation. Now, these villages depend on agriculture for their livelihood. So this environmental project provides sustainable, long-term benefits to all of the people. Environmental projects fall into several of our areas of focus, but we can do much more. So even more good news for you is that the trustees of our Rotary Foundation at our October meeting, and with the support of the Board of Directors, created a task force, not a committee, a task force, to investigate how we can incorporate environmental issues more prominently into our areas of focus. And I have the privilege of being chairman of that task force, and our aim is to help Rotary clubs and districts undertake global grants to assist our environment. And this innovation demonstrates that your Rotary leadership recognises how important it is for our great organisation to give matters of the environment the careful attention that they deserve. If you're coming to the RI convention in Honolulu, and I'm sure most of you are, then be aware that World Environment Day is on the 5th of June, right before the convention starts. Come along. See and celebrate how Rotary connects the world by helping the environment. Also, President Mark and his team are making Honolulu the most environmentally conscious convention ever by minimising waste and introducing many innovations. Yay. And I sincerely congratulate President Mark and his crew on this initiative. My friends, Rotary leaders, 
Let me close with another quote from Ban Ki-moon regarding the importance of our environment. He memorably said, we have no plan B because there is no planet B. And he's correct. Rotary should and Rotary must ensure that environmental sustainability is an important part of our project work. Not just because it will make us more attractive to younger generations, although it will, but because it's the right thing to do. Now, President-elect Holger mentioned that my home country of Australia has suffered dreadfully these past few months from bushfires. We've been delighted to receive support from just about everywhere. And on behalf of those impacted by our disaster, may I thank through you, the Rotarians of the world, because we are most grateful for your support. And Holger asked me to show you this website from Rotary Australia World Community Service, which is where you can go to see how to donate through Rotary to bushfire recovery. And this catastrophe is another example of why action in support of the environment is more vital than ever. And as concerned citizens of the world, we can't leave this to politicians because they're politicians. <laughs> With apologies to any politicians present. <laughs> so we Rotarians need to be leaders. As you've heard from President-elect Holger, Rotary opens opportunities. And more than ever, those opportunities will come in the form of environmental protection. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, I wish you well for an exciting period of leadership ahead of you. And one bit of advice from me, don't forget, while you're working hard, to have fun, because it'll be good for you, it'll be good for the rest of us. Enjoy.